Hi everybody, it's Martin the Flicking Feathers again today, and I'm tying another bonefish fly. Um, it's a Simram. There is an older video that I did of the Simram, but um, it wasn't very good, and somebody did ask me to redo it. Also, one another channel I saw yesterday put out a, a, a how-to video of the Simram, and it was pretty poor, to say the least, so... I thought I'd do one showing you how to tie it properly using like, the right materials and hook and stuff. So the hook I'm using here is sort of standard, like a standard saltwater hook. This is a Gamakatsu SL11 3H. You can use like a Mustad 34007, Tiemco uh, 911S, something like that. Right? You, you don't want a short shank hook. Right? You want like your standard length. This is a four, you can tie them in twos. Uh, quite a, you know, it's a reasonably big fly. Now I've just got to start some pink, shell pink, uh, Danville's thread. And three up. I'm going to quickly run down and around the bend. Back to just the start of the bend here. So my thread's like part halfway between the barb and the point, and this is where I'm going to attach my weight. Right. Let's check that they're square. Tighten up, lock them in. Don't be shy with your wraps. Just get these. Really well secured in that, on that hook. So the first thing I'm going to tie in is I'm going to take two strands of crystal flash, two or three. I wouldn't go much more than that. Just got to take my thread about halfway down the shank, fold them across, fold the crystal flash over, and tie it down. Right. That helps you to sort of you start build up a bit of a body base, and you're also be coming back and forward through the eyes. You're further locking them in because you're anchoring the thread on the shank on both sides. The rest of the tail's craft fur. I'm not going to tell you what brand to use. Just use whatever you like. Different folk have got different preferences. I'm going to take away all the really short under fur. Keep that for dubbing. It's good for tie flies, like the usual things like that. And I'll just take away a couple of these really long fibres and bring them back in more in line with the length of the the main clump. About, I like my tail to have about two hook shanks long. I just tie that in behind those those uh, dumbbell eyes. So I'm away my waist. Tidy everything up. I like to make this a nice sort of smooth underbody here. Uh, next is some flat diamond braid. 
cut off enough for a couple of flies. And I'm just going to catch this in. In, in front of these dumbbells. And then I'll come back through and catch it behind. Pull that to the front and I'll just come in with a wee bit of super glue. Right, this will protect your uh, your diamond braid. That's the sort of weakest material really in the fly. And then I'll just figure of it through the dumbbells as well. Got a decent amount of coverage, you don't need to be like super fussy, but come across your thread and then tie it back hard against those dumbbells. I'll just smooth off that transition with my thread. I'll come back. I'll make a dubbing loop a few inches long. Doesn't need to be huge. Okay, I want that tight up against the tight up against the dumbbells. And I'll leave that loop back there. Take my thread to the front and I'll just throw a wee half hitch to uh, well just so that if I bump the thread around, it's not going anywhere. And then, I'll just put some wax on that dubbing loop. It'll stiffen up the loop, stop it tangling, and also it'll give me a wee bit of grip um, when I put the hair in to manipulate it. So, I like the dubbing look because you don't have the bulk of the rabbit hide in the fly, but some people like that, it's a bit quicker, but I prefer it without. So take your zonka strip, give it a good stretch, and then sweep the fibres against the grain so that they stand perpendicular to the hide, like that. I'll take this clip and I'm going to again go against the grain until I fill the clip. This clip's a couple inch, it's like a two inch bulldog clip. It's the it seems like a perfect size for this number four Simram. So I'll take my dub and spinner. Stick it in the loop. So I've got a wee bit of tension. Oops. Just missed a little sliver of leather there. Um, get that here in the loop. And then just carefully, carefully tap or adjust all your butt ends. Get your butt ends as short as you can live with. So you've got as much length from your rabbit as you can get there. Then spin up your loop. And don't be shy with this, you're using, I mean I'm using 3-0 thread here. It's good and strong. 
you can really you can really go to town with your with spinning this loop up nice and tight, right? I mean you should be able to let pull on it and the hair doesn't come out. And then just before I wind it, I'll get a wee brush. Just helps to free some fibres. You could use Velcro, but you need to be careful of your thread. Now what I like to do, I just wind this on the spot till I get up close. And I want to make sure my first wrap I need to come back one. I want my first wrap right tight. And against these dumbbells. So that when that rabbit gets swept back it will be just reaching the base of the craft for tail. I'm just going to wind it forward, sweep the fibres back, don't be too worried. Um about trapping rabbit. Make sure I've got all that hook filled up with the dubbing loop. And you can see here I've been able to wind that dubbing loop right up to the eye, so it's which I couldn't do if it was a zonker sit to hide because it would be just too big. Take two turns over the dubbing loop, then I'll take three back. That's enough to hold in. Right, that, that's never ever coming out. So a couple just for to sweep any of the fibres back. I'll just throw another half hitch at this stage. Now take your you can either take your bodkin or some velcro, but make sure you protect your body braid because if you touch that loose bit of body braid with the velcro, it will just blow up. I just give this a rub. Push a thread as well. And that pulls out any. Trapped um, bits of rabbit fur. Gives you a nice, this sort of chaotic looking puff a rabbit. Now, just to finish it off, just take your, your bodkin there. You may actually find that there's still a few fibres that you can get, but just split it, just use my bodkin to split it as evenly as I can. Fold those fi those hair and fibres down and pull the body braid forward. Any fibres going forward of the eye, you can see we've got a couple of kind of unruly Fibers, just pull them back as well. Take your thread down to the front, tidy everything up, and then fold that body braid back, wind back up and over. And then just again sweep everything back, build a nice wee neat head. Then you can whip finish. Careful not to catch any any rabbit in your whip finish. Always two. <coughs> Excuse me. So 
And that's basically it, that's the sim ram. Last thing to do is just to put a wee bit of super glue over your thread wraps or head cement, whatever you prefer. Don't touch your rabbit fur, whatever you do. Just make sure you get it in the thread and nothing else. And that's it. A really, really effective fly for big bone fish. Full of movement, even when it's sitting still. Like that rabbit fur's blowing around the craft fur's plenty mobile as well. Uh, well worth a place in your box. To them different sizes, twos, fours, different weights. Um, yeah. So I hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up below. Tell lines, guys. Bye.